Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mama Wears Athleisure. I am your host, Mariella de Santiago, a first time mom. We focus on all things mom with tips to help make life easier and more organized for all you mamas out there. Hi, everyone. Today I have Nina Jung, and we are going to talk about acupuncture while pregnant. So whenever I think about acupuncture, I always think back to that episode of Sex in the City with Charlotte, where mm. she goes. Yes. You probably know which one I'm talking about. Where I know exactly what you're going to talk about. Yes. And so, but anyway, I really don't know very much about acupuncture while pregnant or even outside of that. I just know that it looks enticing. So I'm going to hand it over to you if you can start off by just sharing a little bit about yourself and your business. My name is Nina. I'm an acupuncturist, a postpartum mom coach, and honestly, unapologetically, a scrunchy mom to now a 15-month-old. And so my mission or my business is really to tell the world about the power of East Asian medicine because it's such a powerful modality and really like it's in the everyday things that we do. And acupuncture, the needling, is one portion of that. And so I do a combination of East Asian medicine and personalized health coaching to help, you know, moms, mom bosses, such as ourselves, navigate stress and balance their hormones and live more vibrantly through all stages of their motherhood. Let's yeah. just share, start off with talking about like, what is acupuncture? Most people, I think, probably just think about, yes, the needles going into yes. different areas throughout your body. And when I also think of it, I know that they're trying to essentially hit certain points to alleviate certain stressors. Yeah. Well, you right? kind of hit it on the nail. Yeah, no, for sure. And it acupuncture is a modality of the greater East Asian medicine, which kind of involves acupuncture, the needling, but it is also from yoga. There's yoga and Qigong, which is like the movement part of it because everything is about energy and movement. And then you have massage as well, cupping and the gua sha, which you've seen because people use it as like a beauty tool, like the scraping, which it is great for that as well. But it's also more powerful if you use it also on the body. But anyways, with the basis of acupuncture is like you said, you're putting it in specific points on the body. And it really is to balance the flow of energy or chi, prana, whatever you want to call it to promote that healing and also relieve pain. And like we said, in East Asian medicine perspective, the mind, your emotions and the physical body are all connected. So it, and it really, the acupuncture in itself, the needles taps into that nervous system and it elicits a response that your body sort of needs, right? So for example, you were posting about your dog. I know she passed, but she was in pain. So like it does, like there's that physical response, right? Because it opens up the the, neur the neural pathways to with endorphins to help with pain. But then also for when you saw the Charlotte sort of episode, it also kind of, it helps, so helps with stress, which is like the most important thing to balance our hormones to also conceive. Does that make sense? Like, so when you're super stressed, that leads to, our hormones being sort of all out of whack. And we know that now being a mom, but even preconception, it happens. And so it's just helping sort of balance and bringing our bodies back to homeostasis in a simply way. But yeah, so my dog, of, I'm going to try not mm -hmm. to get emotional. I know. Yeah. <laughs> my dog of 11 years, yeah. she did get acupuncture towards like the last two weeks That's, of yeah. her life. And it really did help. Like we thought we were going to lose her. And we took her to get acupuncture that mm -hmm. same day and it like let her walk for another mm -hmm. week and, and it really did keep her going. So yeah. I've just seen what it did at least for her as here I am saying I'm not gonna get emotional, but no, but that's doing. she's your baby. Yeah. And that to me, like even me, like I'm getting chills. It it makes sense because it's just providing her a little bit of a relief so that she can come out of her shell, even though, yes, at the end of the day, she passed, it was her time, but it was like a beautiful transition. And that's like, even I'm getting emotional, that's like the potency of acupuncture and just East Asian medicine, because it really connects whatever's happening internally 
with the physicality. So it, it keeps you going. It allows you to like go deep in and just chill out or whatever you need. Really just it, it gives whatever you need in that moment. And you might not even know it at the time. That's the awesome thing about it. And you don't have to always talk about it because it just brings it out of your body, really. Yeah, and, you know, that. even for your, your dog, like for her, like you, she is communicating with you, right? But even though not in our language, but that's it was like it's a beautiful transition. Well, and it allowed me to yeah. spend more time with her. Which yeah, what, exactly. You know, I wanted. Yep. So <laughs> going, okay. I was so worried <laughs> that I was going to have to blow my nose on this episode because I am a little under the weather. And what? now okay. I'm just blow having nose. to blow my nose because nose. I'm crying. <laughs> yeah. I think one of the biggest questions that probably comes to thought for anyone that has not had exposure to acupuncture or really any question that first comes to thought if you're pregnant is, is it safe, <laughs> right? You ask this I for know. anything. So I don't, I, the, there really is no exception. You, even with food, is it safe? It's safe. It's actually, it's a very safe, natural and effective treatment modality that supports you during your pregnancy. I mean, the only caveat is obviously see a licensed acupuncturist and you have to be licensed to practice in the state of California, but just even like if your listeners are out of state, a lot of chiros and physical therapists can also needle. So but they are an acupuncture provider or they do dry needle. So there is a difference because it's the way you're looking at the body, right? It's just because East Asian medicine, it's a whole system in itself. Whereas your Cairo and physical therapists are doing it in the terms of pain management, very different. So that, that would be my caveat. Not to say they're not great, but just see your licensed acupuncturist. Well, let's get into yeah. how does acupuncture help or support a mom while pregnant? Are you ready to change the way you diaper change? Introducing the Changeroo, the ultimate solution for stylish and convenient diaper changes. This innovative and stylish couch pillow seamlessly transforms into a hidden changing station because let's face it, diaper changes happen on the couch and floor more often than anywhere else. With the Changeroo, you can now change your little one's diaper conveniently in the room where you and your little one spend the most time together. All in a fun, stylish, and organized way. Say goodbye to constantly having to grab supplies or make inconvenient trips to the changing station. With the change of pillow, you'll add a special touch of organization and charm to your home of teensy ones. Elevate your parenting experience with the change of Brought to you by Teensy Tidy. Visit TeensyTidyLiving.com to get yours today. Yeah, so each treatment is tailored to a mama's specific need and concerns throughout her life cycle. So if we talk about it for the life cycle. So during the first trimester, our body is going through the most change physiologically, right? So I actually recommend weekly treatments because, you know, I did it and I'm sure you noticed, you know, it manages symptoms of nausea, vomiting. It prevents constipation, bloating. And you're really tired those first 12 weeks. It helps with fatigue and that starting, you might start to get pregnancy insomnia. And also for, and it's also very powerful for preventing miscarriage because again, we're looking at you as a whole person and really getting at the root cause of everything that's going on during pregnancy and pre-pregnancy. And then during the second trimester, I, again, recommending bi-weekly just to maintain all the work that we've done during the first 12 weeks and just to, and to optimize your body as, again, it's going through change. And here there comes more stress because now you're kind of doing more like physiological stress, like your body, because you're able to work out, you have more energy. But some with that comes with like, you might have a little bit more aches and pains. I know a lot of my pregnant patients had lower back pain or pelvic pain. So we can help with that with cupping, with the needles, with the gua sha. And again, to maintain energy. And then third trimester, coming back again weekly, because again, it helps with gestational diabetes, hypertension. And then some women do get breached. So we recommend coming back at 32 weeks because we can help sort of flip the baby. But again, you want to come earlier, the better. And then it helps with labor prep at 35 weeks to open up the cervix, again, manage any edema, and just also really to help with that emotional transition from being pregnant to now giving birth. I don't know if I personally went through that. There's a lot of transition like that goes on internally, who you were to who you are going to become. So it's like, 
it, and again, like I was saying, like the mind and body are one. So all these things are going on and physiologically you're growing this human and it's like a lot on you, a lot of things going on. So it just <laughs> helps kind of calm all those voices that's bound to happen. And just, it really helped me just to calm my anxiety, calm my mind and just kind of like come back to just being at home in a way, home in my body, but home like <laughs> physically. And then fourth trimester, which I know it's like a se- another whole topic, but the postpartum time also really important because now, yeah, the acupuncture will really warm up your kidneys and also really help with getting and nourishing the blood, help with milk production and any anxiety that's surrounding after it. And it really holds a safe space for mom and baby and I think that's super important, right? To just, again, ease that transition. It's all about easing the transition from mom. So she's like super present for baby with other kids. It's just, we focus a lot on the baby, which is awesome, right? But like, what about the mom? You're providing this life. If you're like super stressed in all the ways, then your baby does feel it, you know what I mean? And that's me saying from a both evidence-based and being a granola mom. <laughs> yeah, I am totally a firm yeah. believer that like yeah. your children pick up on your energy. 100%. But it's one of their like stronger senses because they also can't really communicate verbally yet other than just screaming, <laughs> right? Until they're able to have more words or signs. So yeah, everything is really, they can sense it. They can sense it. I mean, and they're really smart, right? Because they know like when you're sad, because they they feel you, they have your energy, they're with you all the time, right? And your nervous systems are so interconnected, right? Because you, again, grew them out of your own body. So then they're out in this world and earth side and you guys are still like connected, right? Until I, yeah, until they're a bit older and they establish more independence and all that stuff. And you know, as being a teacher, so. (laughs) <laughs> very connected, I think. So, yes. Yeah. So when would be the best time? I feel like you kind of answered this, but if yeah. somebody is listening to this at an at any time trimester, what would be the, the best time for them to come check it out? See any time is something? a good time. Any time is a good time. It, you know, just start if especially if you feel those things, like if you're having let's say you are like 32 weeks, and you're having back pain, I mean, I had patients come in and they have like back pain or hip pain just because now everything is growing in the middle. It's like putting pressure. Come in. It helps alleviate that, right? It's So just come in. Or if you're having nausea, like really awesome for that. It's the only thing that worked for me personally, right? And that's me saying it. And I practice the medicine. I would just needle myself every day. Wow. Yeah. Just because that was, it provides that relief, right? Because it just, yeah. Other than that, I was super nauseous all the time. So- I was very fortunate that I didn't have any of that. Oh, that's awesome. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> I just had really bad heartburn every day starting at like, like four. And even though I had heartburn, I was still like, I need spicy food. Give me my Taki. <laughs> so I, I really didn't do myself any favors there. But Luciano has a lot of hair. The the midwife tale of when you have yep. heartburn, they have lots of hair. <laughs> so And he came out with a full head of hair. Oh my gosh, yep. his hair. It's very luscious. <laughs> I love it. It's awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. So are there any risks risks associated with acupuncture during pregnancy or anything that a mom should maybe just kind of be aware of or concerned? You, you know, know just- because your acupuncturist will know there's points that we wouldn't recommend doing. And just like with anything, right? Like you don't want to be doing certain things. So same thing, your acupuncture should will know that. So no, I don't think there is any risk. I think in fact, it helps mitigate the other risks. So like you had this post on like geriatric pregnancy, like same with me. And people were like, oh, like you shouldn't be. And I did all the things that you aren't supposed to do as being an older mom. But that's because I was doing all these things for myself and I knew my body, right? And it just helps with like the diabetes, like I was saying, hypertension, especially as a older mom. <laughs> I put that and in quotes. just love the unsolicited yeah. advice. As yeah. In, yeah. Being considered an old mom. <laughs> I know. <laughs> my Just favorite, the age, though, 35. <laughs> I'm, like, what? I'm sure every mom gets this. And I, I hated this one. 
oh, make sure you sleep now. And I'm thinking, because I'm going to go ahead and collect all those hours and cash them in later. Like, I don't know. I, I don't get what sleeping now is going to do for me when my child is up at 2 a.m. I know. Exactly. You just, yeah, you just sleep when you want to. <laughs> Well, do you have any other tips or suggestions or recommendations about acupuncture? Anyone that's starting wanting to maybe look into it, where to go, what to look for? Yeah, I mean, where to go? There's a lots of great places in San Diego. I would start by just Google close ones to you because I always find that that's the easiest. But in terms of like for women's health and pregnancy, definitely look for acupuncturists that have experience with it. A lot of like fertility specialists will because they do the full cycle from fertility to postpartum. Midwives is a good resource or midwives because they'll know or even your OB because if they're holistic, they'll be partnered up with it and still keep up with your prenatals and more protein than you think. It's always key during pregnancy, preconception and postpartum, especially for women. And that's really it. I would say. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate no you worries. taking time to thank share you. all of this. I appreciate you having me. Thank you for listening. Tune in next week for our next episode. You can find us on Instagram for more updates and tips. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts and give us a review if you like us.